Can we save a load of time by using video AI to clean up a low quality render rather than waiting the brutal number of hours that it takes to create a high quality render? Are the results acceptable? Is the amount of time saved worth it? And what do I mean by low quality in the first place? Am I talking about noisy, low resolution, low frame rate? Yes, yes, and yes. And we're gonna test it all out and we're gonna see which one comes out looking the best and saving the most time. I'm using Cinema 4D and Redshift on a Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra, which is a super fast computer, except when it comes to GPU rendering. I do have a PC specifically for 3D rendering, but this video is more for those who don't have a fast rendering rig and need to save time. So back to the Mac. This three second video took nine hours, just over nine hours to render at 1080p, 30 frames per second, and with Redshift's automatic sampling set to the high preset. With an M1 Max, you'd be looking at closer to 18 hours. That's absolutely insane. If you're not familiar with automatic sampling in Redshift in the first place, it basically lets you use one setting to determine the amount of rays or samples that each pixel shoots out into the scene to take a measurement to figure out what that pixel should look like. The lower the number that you set in Redshift, the lower the tolerance for noise. So lower number equals less noise, which requires more samples, which takes more rendering time. That's more math that the GPU has to solve. So again, 1080p, 30 frames per second, the high sampling preset, which gives us a relatively low grain, low noise result, took nine freaking hours. I can't live like that. So first of all, how much time can we save by lowering the quality at render time. I have a few different answers depending on where we decide to cut corners. So let me consult my notes here. All right, for our first test, we are going to lower the resolution to 960 by 540. So we're gonna cut the height and width of the 1080p render in half, uh, resulting in a quarter of the number of pixels. The render time for this test got down to two hours and 35 minutes, uh, rather than nine hours and four minutes, which you know, that's a massive amount of time to save. So basically we cut the resolution down by 75% and we cut the time down by less than 75%, but we cut it down significantly. But the result being that it's low resolution is soft and lacking in detail. Doesn't, doesn't look great. So we'll see if video AI is gonna be able to fix that. Test number two, keeping the render at the full 1080p, leaving the resolution alone and instead lowering the frame rate to 15 frames per second, going from 30 frames per second, cutting that in half down to 15 frames per second. That, as you might expect, took four hours and 45 minutes. So we cut the number of frames in half, we cut the rendering time in half. Makes sense. Uh, but the result is terribly stuttery. This is not acceptable in its current form. Low frame rate, it almost looks like the video is not loading properly. Uh, a client or a stakeholder is uh, not gonna be able to see past this uh, terribly low frame rate, um, and of course, as a portfolio piece, ain't happening. But each frame does look good by itself. All right, test number three. This time we're gonna leave it at the full 1080p, we're gonna leave it at the full 30 frames per second, but we're gonna bring down the adaptive sampling preset and redshift to low. So we're going from high all the way down to low, which is gonna fire many fewer rays, many fewer samples uh, per pixel. It's gonna speed things up a lot. In fact, we went from nine hours to an hour and 46 minutes uh, at full resolution, full frame rate, just because we're doing so much less math to figure out how to uh, render each pixel uh, of each frame. So it's really a huge time savings. And the result, uh, we just have more noise, right? That's the result of not taking detailed enough measurements of each thing in the scene, and certain things require more samples in order to get a clean result. Some examples of that would be uh, blur as a result of shallow depth of field, or blur as a result of motion, or blur as a result of some sort of scattering or roughness happening within, let's say, like a frosted glass. So you can see that this object here at the bottom that's frosted glass is actually kind of getting the worst of it when it comes to the noise. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, when it's time to clean this one up. And then finally, test number four, we're combining all three. We're gonna go a quarter of the resolution, half the frame rate, so 960 by 540 at 15 frames per second, and we're gonna go with the low sampling preset. So it's gonna be noisy, small, lacking in detail, and stuttery as a result of the, uh, of the low frame rate. But now we're down to 22 minutes. We've gone from nine hours 
to 22 minutes and 50 seconds. So what's the result? <laughs> crap. Pure, unadulterated crap. So now the big question, can AI rescue these clips successfully? Recently, a company called Topaz Labs came out with an application called Video AI 4 that claims to be capable of some pretty serious magic. So we're gonna find out if it does the trick or not. This video is in no way sponsored by Topaz Labs. And in fact, by the end of this video, they might not even like me very much. We'll have to see how the results turn out. Let's see how it does with bad render number one, the low resolution render. In video AI, I did a 2X upscale to 1080p, which is 2X both horizontally and vertically. So four times the total number of pixels. Using the enhancement mode, with the Proteus AI model, which took 10 seconds to upscale. So the original is small, but relatively high quality, you know, if you view it pixel for pixel, uh, but I'm blowing it up to fill the full frame. So blowing this up to fill the full frame, we're looking at a very primitive form of interpolation where uh, we're mostly just kind of blurring the pixels together to enlarge it, but if we look at the video AI result, the video AI result is analyzing and creating new pixels. And it actually, it's doing a pretty decent job. Um, I don't think this is gonna end up being my favorite of the bunch, just cause we're missing some authentic critical detail uh, with the AI result. It, it's doing its best and it's really not doing a bad job. There just is like a little bit of flickering where from one frame to the next, the AI is kind of deciding on slightly different detail to fill in. So it's uh, it's not perfect, but you know, it, it, on this one we did save uh, a significant amount of time. This was the one that was a quarter resolution and took uh, therefore almost a quarter the time. So not bad, really not bad at all. Let's look at number two, the low frame rate render. So with this one, I doubled the frame rate to 30 frames per second using frame interpolation mode in video AI with the Apollo AI model, which took 33 seconds to interpolate the frames. Let's look at the original a few times. So original super stuttery, absolutely not usable at this low frame rate of 15. And let's loop the video AI version. Let's see what we ended up with. Wow, that that is pretty smooth. <laughs> that is really smooth. I'm surprised, I thought this was maybe asking too much. I thought this was gonna be a pretty heavy lift. Half of the frames that we're seeing here are not real. They weren't part of the original video and it definitely, I mean, my eyes my eyes can't tell. Um, I don't know about you, I'll keep looping it a few more times. I cannot tell uh, that this is frame interpolated. I'm sure if we slowed things down or paused things, there might be some artifacting where uh, overlapping motion occurs, but really, this is, this is pretty impressive. Uh, this one took half the time, so it wasn't the biggest time savings, right? Because we only rendered half the frames. We still rendered the remaining half at the full quality, full resolution, with the sample preset set to high. Uh, so it definitely wasn't the fastest. This one still took over four hours. Let's look at number three, the low sampling preset. So for this one, we were at full resolution, full frame rate, and let's look at the original, which is just noisy that's really its only major flaw. You really see the noise coming through on that frosted glass block uh, that's at the bottom. That one's, that one's looking pretty bad. So let's see how the noise reduction did in video AI. It's not great, it's good, it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at that block and especially before it puffs up and gets larger, um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing some noise. I'm seeing that the algorithm is struggling to discern detail from noise, which is to be expected. You get that with pretty much any and all noise reduction. What you get usually with more primitive noise reduction is a complete loss of detail, right? It'll just blow out the detail to get rid of the noise. And I'm sure I could get a better result here if I, uh, if I played a little bit more. I mean, we do have some settings like recover detail and add noise, uh, and I'm sure we can improve upon this result slightly, but uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. And this one, uh, this one saved us a ton of time. Um, this, this was less than two hours to render. So this is still not a bad candidate because it went from being unacceptably noisy to just being, you know, you yeah, know, there's signs, <laughs> there's signs of noise. All right. So now let's go to render number four, the absolute nightmare scenario. This was the one that was low resolution, low frame rate, and 
low sampling quality, right? So we're looking at noisy, small, and stuttery all at the same time. Let's see what video AI does with this. If we ask it to double the frame rate to 30 frames per second using frame interpolation with the Apollo AI model again, and two times upscale, two times width, two times height to 1080p using enhancement with the Artemis denoise sharpen AI model at a low input quality. So I'm telling it the footage coming in is not great, right? I'm giving it a little heads up there. This took only 17 seconds to clean up. I mean, all of these have taken a matter of seconds to, to clean up. Um, let's let the original loop a few times. I mean, it's, it's bad, right? <laughs> and uh, let's look at the video AI version. That is not terrible. That is really not terrible. I mean, the frame interpolation is absolutely killer. It almost looks like the noise reduction did a better job on this one than it did on the full resolution one, which is shocking. But at the same time, maybe the quality of the noise at lower resolution was a bit more clumpy and the algorithm or, or AI may have recognized that as being noise in a, in a way that it thought it was detail on the higher resolution one. So um, this is interesting. This is totally passable. I mean, like not passable as a portfolio piece, not passable as, uh, as something that I would deliver as, as final work. But the fact that this only took 22 minutes instead of nine hours to crank out of Cinema 4D and Redshift, um, and, and, the, and the fact that it took video AI 17 seconds to turn that pure, unadulterated crap into this, that that's impressive. This could totally be sent over as a draft copy to a stakeholder or, you know, a collaborator that I'm working with uh, so we could decide whether or not we like where this is going to end up. This is kind of a game changer. It, it really is. And it's totally up to you to decide which render is the best trade-off. But at this point, I'm blown away by the low frame rate and the noise reduction wasn't terrible. So combining those two might be the way to go. And the low quality across the board is definitely passable for a draft preview for clients or stakeholders. So in my opinion, uh, the few seconds that it takes for video AI to clean up this footage is 100%, 1,000% worth it. Because ain't nobody got time for a nine hour render for three seconds of footage. And that's not knowing if you're even gonna like the final output. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm honestly really curious which you think is the best trade-off. And hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll have more behind the scenes content where I share my tools, my workflows with you to hopefully save you a little bit of time getting to better work faster. See you soon.